color. What uh, they told them to get their aprons out, fill them up with kernels of corn, go up, throw it on the grass to feed the chickens. Well, you see, I'll swirl it around just a little bit. Oh, oh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> now it's okay. Okay. For your address. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is uh, the children's room. So six children in this room. Wow. Yeah. So you'd get the three boys in this bed and three girls in this one. Whoa. That was normally done. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, eh? Any yeah. more children, they might put um, a mattress underneath or have a trundle bed that pulls out and can push in. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they didn't, um, if you think about modesty, like boys and girls together, what did they, you know, that yeah. seems not good, right? Um, they uh, all were wearing under their clothes something that looked like a white nightgown, yeah. boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the girls, it's called a chemise. Yeah. And it's probably longer than the boys. It might come down to there. Boys, it would come about knee level, and it would just be like a white, a white, and they'd sleep in it. Get up in the morning, put their clothes back on over it. They might wear, they probably wear the same clothes. Um, if it was wash day, they might change into something else. Um, eventually, the undershirt would be washed because that would be next to their body, yeah. and they would maybe have a second one that they could change into, um, and they might do that. Maybe they would do it in a you know when the kids are off somewhere else and yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Depends I, I, on the I, I, age. You, too little, it doesn't matter as much. It's just older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But they did have a commode here too. So they would have been in the same room using this. This is home. Hello. Good, good. Prince Hu, I see the children's activity. Oh, also, no, no, we just have an activity here. If kids come in, they can do a little bit of a scavenger hunt. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Danny room. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Very big house, this one. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, upstairs. Now know ye that pounds, but... Pardon me, sorry, have you been to the house before? It was the home of Robert and Mary Gillen in the early, like, mid-1850s. They commissioned to have this house built, so they arranged to have it built, so we think they were fairly well off. We had a brother that lived here as well. Um, unfortunately, he passed away before he could actually live in this house. So it was his widow, Mary, and her daughters that lived here. And what's significant is that only women ever lived in this house. And then eventually one of um, Robert and Mary's daughters, she also became a widow, and it was she and her daughters that in turn lived in the house too. Um, it's from the Brantford area, you know, Brantford City Yeah, Brantford, Brantford. yeah. Courthouse. Oh, this uh, that house original there. They yeah. moved here. And the address was 100 Wellington Street. And on the um, they used to call the house the family did Old Hundred. They had a kind of a, um, a a name for the house, like it was just a pet name, really. Um, so uh, they lived there. And then when the city uh, was proposing building that courthouse, they were taking over land for that and that's when we ended up getting the building in the 60s at Westfield it was moved here.
Okay. So, and this is the original deed that the, this family was just oh, looking wow. at for the house. So it's pre-Confederation because it's saying province of Canada. Yeah. Because we had, um, well, our area would become Ontario and the other part of the province of Canada would become Quebec. So, I, I, it's hard to read it. Yeah. I'm having trouble reading it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's a sale. Should, yes. <laughs> and we're making a, we're interpreting the building for 1912. So that you, that's when Canadians were, in, it, there was more progress. Um, early settlement phase was over. Some people, you know, there were more advances in technology. People had plumbing. This family had like a toilet, a bathtub. Eventually they'd have electricity. Um, this was when Sir Wilfred Laurier was Prime Minister. We had the, the railway line going out to BC, which brought Canada into Confederation. They had access to more consumer goods. People had time to, um, more leisure time. That's when, you know, with the Victorians, you've got all these knickknacks and things that they embroidered. They could sew or, you know, paint or, you know, if, but of course, if you were fairly well off, you could do that. If you weren't, you probably didn't have time to do those kind of things. Yeah. So, um, this is a, a master yeah. room. This is a bedroom here. Yeah. yeah, you can see everything they decorated. Often they'd have pin cushions, which would have fancy embroidery on them. Things like that. Okay. Yeah. Let's trip the master room. Yes. <laughs> and how do we get the bed up here? That's what I always say to people. But I think the headboard, they probably would have been able to take that up. I don't know how they brought that up here. Because those uh, windows are small. Like, how do you... Yeah. Well, here. It's a corner. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, very nice. And yeah. the furniture that's here is uh, for the time period that would have been for around 1912, what they would have had. But it didn't belong to the family, but I... I I have to double check, but I think I was told this wicker chair was something that the family had owned. I have to check about that. That's one thing that they did own. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. But it's good. We can we can have that sit together, right? Good. So yeah, furniture. Exactly. <laughs> so. Can you 